Okay, Dave here again. Hello. And I'm back. I wanted to show you some more. Um, in this case, I want to show you about the software that I use. And I wanted to just kind of list it here and go through it one at a time. Um, I guess the first thing I'll talk about is Screencast-O-Matic. I'm jumping down here to number four. Um, Screencast-O-Matic is the software that I'm using that records the lecture capture. So it's pretty easy to use. You just launch it and hit record. I'm not going to show you how to use all of these softwares. I just want to tell you how I'm using it, what it's for, and where to get it. Um, in this case, where to get it is if you work at Maricopa, uh, you would search for us. Um, if you're on a Mac, you'd search for self-service. If you're on a PC, you'd search for software. I think it's called Software Center. And um, and when you launch that, it'll uh, open up this little icon here, and you can search for Screencast-O-Matic. I think you can also go to the Screencast-O-Matic website and download it for free if you're not at uh, Maricopa Colleges, Mesa Community College. So just search for screen up here. There it is, and you click the little install button. I don't have to do that because I've already installed it. I'm using it right now. Uh, before I move on, I wanted to just uh, illustrate the difference between um, Screencast-O-Matic, say, and uh, WebEx Meetings or any of the, or Zoom, for instance. Um, I use Screencast-O-Matic when there's going to be a, a considerable production value and some editing. So, like, I might have to put some text on the screen, or I might have to edit uh, here to there. I use Zoom or WebEx Meetings when it's just we're just talking. I'm not going to go back and edit a bunch. It's just uh, to meet with someone and possibly record it for, for posterity later. I'm not saying you can't edit things after the fact in, in uh, meetings. I'm pretty sure you can. But Screencast-O-Matic gives you the flexibility of inserting things and fading things and blurring things and just more production value. So that's the difference there. Back to me. The second piece of software I want you to show you was for lecture captures, uh, there's two things I use. Um, I'm co-teaching a class, and uh, the other instructor uses uh, Zoom, which is technically technically not supported, um, but it still works pretty well, and Zoom has been used a lot for, um, for lecture capture and for um, presentations. It, it records and streams your lecture, and also, oh, so it records it and it streams it, so our students tune in to the lecture. We send them a link, uh, and they sign in. Um, there's some perhaps some concern with security with that, uh, like people dropping into unsecure meetings. So make sure that you lock down your meetings so that not anyone can drop in without um, knowing the URL or passcode. Uh, the other thing that I've been using for my class is uh, WebEx meetings. Now, um, uh, that is supported. And let's see here. If you go to self-service again, you can look for WebEx and WebEx Meetings is here. Now I use both WebEx Teams and WebEx Meetings. Uh, let me tell you the difference. Teams is like a chat thing. Let me show you Teams real quick. So you got your coworkers here. I'm gonna probably have to blur out their names and you've got your messages over here. And it's just a real easy way for communicating in your team. Uh, I use it because it's, it's, there's an app on the phone that you can get, Android or iOS, and it's also a desktop application. This is what we use basically to replace email. Uh, we don't send a lot of emails, we just use uh, Teams. Now, um, I can't seem to get my Teams to work with my students, because so we use a different chat application for the students. We use something called Slack. And Slack is pretty much the same kind of thing, um, same kind of interface. You've got channels over here, and you've got users over here, and then you've got your chat window up here. I'm going to have to blur some of this out because I don't want to get give anyone's information away. Um, but Slack is awesome. Slack was used when I did an internship at a software development company, and a lot of people refer like prefer that to emails. Um, okay. Okay. That being said, we wanted to talk about WebEx. So uh, I think I saw there's actually I misspelled screencast omatic. Let me fix that now. Um Okay, so we want to talk about WebEx Meetings. And uh, WebEx Meetings, here's an application. You don't need to use the application. You can use the web interface. In some ways, the web interface has a lot more options. If you were going to use the web interface, you would go to, uh, let me back this up here. You go to, oh, I'll just type it out. Uh, you go to Mesa CC. This is if you work for Mesa, Mesa Community College. 
Otherwise, you'd probably have a different URL, .webex.com. And uh, you go to sign in here. And you will likely enter your first name dot last name at mesacc.edu. Um, then it might forward you to the next page. Like it might forward you to a uh, uh, secondary login page where you use your MEID and your password. Or in my case, for some reason, I, it just kind of sent me in here. But I'll show you the other screen here where it forwards you to that secondary page and you enter your MEID. Um, but here we got start a meeting and schedule a meeting and all kinds of um, uh, 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 what do you call them? Settings and whatnot. Okay, so let's take a look at that second login page. It might kick you over to this one. This is the actual sign in here. This is where your MEID goes, with, you know, and then your password. Um, then you could sign in and you have the web interface version. You can start a meeting, you can schedule a meeting. When you click start a meeting, it'll uh, probably open up my camera again and uh, it makes a personal room for you. And um, you click start meeting and you can invite your coworkers or um, those that are having a WebEx invitation to the meeting. Now I believe you can actually invite uh, people that aren't even in your organization to the meeting. Let's see here, invite and remind. So you can invite people just with an email. So send an email out, say uh, Joe Schmo at gmail.com and send that email out and uh, it'll send them a link and instructions to sign in. Once they do sign in, they'll be like, it'll be beautiful. There'll be like a screen there and you'll, you'll see your, uh, the remote site, kind of like FaceTime or any of those chat streaming applications, or I'm sorry, tele telecommunications. And uh, the other thing that's cool about it is you can click to schedule um, events. So I've scheduled, um, oh, look at that. It's really kind of messed up my recording here. That's really trippy. All right, let me uh, take a moment. And I'm going to, after uh, I drop some acid, I guess I'll re continue with this presentation. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that was fun. Um, yeah, so I guess you can't have both cameras open at the same time so you can do one or the other but um was it what i was saying was what oh that i use uh meetings uh to schedule my lab hours so i've scheduled lab hours and uh, it's from like say 1 p.m to 2 p.m on monday and i post a link to that in my canvas students can drop in at that time and i've got this screen open and i can help um with them with their homework or whatnot you can also of course have personal you know um uh uh, like coaching sessions or whatever. Um, and uh, I realize I say um a lot now. I'm going to have to stop doing that. Let's see here. Okay, so yeah, here's how you'd schedule the meeting. Uh, what else do we have? I use a lot of Google Drive, of course. You know, I think I've already shared some Drive documents with you. And um, so here's Google Drive, and I've got all the classes I teach, and then, you know, files inside there. Um, I use it to share... Uh, handy links to my students, you know, and I also keep a log of all my of my classes and the associated videos for each class in Google Drive also. I mean, these links are in Canvas as well, but it's kind of nice sometimes having them in one place. So if a student asks me, hey, do you have a video for this or that? I can look here and, and say, yeah, there's a video or there's some sample code. Um, the sample code uh, I use uh, GitHub and uh, Gist to share my code there. Um, okay. I think that's everything. Let me uh, just double check. I've covered everything. Uh, let's see. We covered WebEx. I use meetings for lecture capture and teaching and ad hoc meetings uh, for chat. We use WebEx Teams and Slack. Uh, the learning management system is Canvas. So, um, you know, you can attend a Canvas training if you need help with Canvas. But that's just what our campus uses. And for documents and stuff, I use Google Drive. Boom. I think we got it all. If you have a, a software that you like to use, maybe post a comment down below uh, let me know what it is um, I'd love to hear uh, what you're using out there and uh, or let me know what your experience is with these softwares and why you like them or why you don't like them also subscribe to my YouTube channel cracking code with Dave if you want to learn about programming